Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 100 of the podcast. I'm Angelo Luciani, and let me first start off by saying thank you to our listeners, subscribers, and guests. We truly enjoy putting together this podcast for the Nutanix community, and thank you for taking the time to listen. Let's make 2022 even better. I'd like to get more of you on the show, so if you'd like to join us on the podcast, let me know, and we can make it happen. This week on the podcast, Dwayne chats with Matt Slotten, who's done some really impressive work with moving a portion of our test drive environment on-prem. Think of it as Nutanix running on Nutanix. Dwayne and Matt dive deep into what is involved, what were some of the challenges, and the surprising results. Oh, and there's an interesting French fry story that both Dwayne and Matt share. So with that, let's join the conversation. Today on the show, we have almost a leader of the free world, pretty close, but he is the leader of Test Drive at Nutanix. Hey, Matt Slaughton, how's it going? <laughs> I'm good, Dwayne. How are you? What an intro. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Things are, I guess, you know, getting ready for Santa up north of the border, helping the elves out, you know, Christmas on its way. Have to help out the Americans with your supply chain issues, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, send us some but, uh, computer chips, maybe some cars. That'd be uh, that's what I'll ask for for Christmas. You guys get Christmas what a month earlier in Canada? Is that right? Kind of like Thanksgiving. Well, well, we're trying to do it earlier this year so we get Christmas. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, but you know, we we really wanted to have you on the podcast to talk about test drive. Uh, lately, internally anyway, there's been chatter that test drives are moving. Um, but you know, before we get too into the weeds, maybe just, uh, you know, who is Matt Slotten? How does Man. he look that good on a Friday? <laughs> I don't think we have enough time in the podcast. Uh, no. uh, yeah, definitely happy to be here. Join you, Dwayne. It's, it's always fun. I never know what's coming out of left field with, with the great Dwayne Lester. Uh, but yeah, quick intro about me. Uh, my name is Matt Slotten, uh, I'm director of technical marketing engineering here at Nutanix. And, uh, yeah, I head up the technical team for test drive. Uh, wear a number of different hats, uh, but for today, I'll, I'll put on the test drive hat. And uh, yeah, I guess I'm coming on seven years at Nutanix. I originally joined in our services team and spent about five years within professional services. I got to scoot around the world a bit and spend some time up in the Great White North, so where you're from. And uh, yeah, about three years ago, I changed gears a little bit and uh, went to uh, technical marketing engineering. And uh, yeah, I've been enjoying it ever since and dove right in on test drive for doing some, some moving and, and hustling and shifting. And it's been a, been a fun project. Yeah. You've been here long enough to work on many things. And I guess when that happens, you never really let go of, of a lot of things either, but from, you know, if you were, if I was to go into the Googs and uh, type in test drive, I would hopefully find the landing page, but you know, there'd be a, a plethora of options, but what, what is test drive for Nutanix? You know, what the heck is it? Sure. Yeah. It's a, it's super cool. <laughs> we'll throw mm -hmm. the pitch in there. So yeah, definitely. Uh, I guess for those your, listening, if you, it's your baby. It's my baby. Yeah. For those, for those interested, uh, go to Nutanix.com forward slash test drive. Uh, that'll get you access to, to almost all of them. But yeah, it's, it's essentially, uh, it was born, it, it basically has been born and reborn uh, really a couple times now, but uh, it was initially a kind of take on, on uh, trying to consumerize what our, our engineering team does uh, and using that to try to get our product in the hands of the customer. So for, from my seat, I guess one of my roles uh, still today actually is uh, helping with our .next labs, uh, so hands-on labs and uh, coordinating the lab content, you know, coordinating the actual lab so users can log in and kick the tires. And uh, we, we pride ourselves here at Nutanix in, in that we actually, we, we use true blue product. Uh, you know, we don't, you don't just use pre-recorded videos or, you know, fake mock-ups. I know, you know, coming as a practitioner, it always bothered me, you know, well, I'm not going to call any vendors out by name, but it always bothered me taking other vendors' uh, demos when I it wasn't the real demo. Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, it's just a conversation between friends, Matt. <laughs> okay, it's just well. a conversation between friends. You know, just whisper it gently. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, taking kind of what we learned from that, it, it's one of our most attended events, uh, whether in person for hands-on labs or obviously kind of as of late, we've been doing .next digital and uh, it continues to be one of our most attended events as part of the conference. And we kind of stepped back and said, Hey, you know, this you is remember. great. Oh, go ahead. 
No, I was just going to say, you remember when we used to see people live? We used to shake hands. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen another human in, I guess, two years. I guess. Not, <laughs> not, you don't count my wife. She'd be pretty upset if, if I, she heard me say that. I've obviously seen her. Seen her. But yeah, it's a, it's a weird time, man. I, I very much look forward to in-person conferences again for the, for the swag alone. Uh, well, but yeah, I, I had a tweet a couple of weeks ago about running out of t-shirts. I just I had to buy my own shirts. That's how bad it got. Dude, uh, it's fun. Yeah. Like my, all my Nutanix stuff, it's, it's like a frozen in time. Uh, like I don't have a Nutanix t-shirt newer than two years. It's weird. I used to have a constant <laughs> stream of, of t-shirts and swag and drones and uh, it's all dried up. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so to take it away from the, the conference, you know, we kind of stepped back and said, hey, how can we how can we bring this really popular conference thing to people and they don't have to come to the conference? Uh, so kind of the, the idea for Test Drive kind of started there, you know, obviously being a, you know, web forward technology, right? You can administer Nutanix, almost all Nutanix products via a web browser. Uh, we said, you know, there's nothing technically stopping us from, you know, delivering this to end users. So I'm not going to go belabor it too much, but long story short, uh, yeah, Test Drive is essentially a hands-on lab demo environment that you can access from the comfort of your own home uh, that is hopefully infection-free. And uh, yeah, you can you can sit back, relax, kick the tires anytime you want, sign up for a Test Drive. And what we do is we, we take a real Nutanix product, whether it's AOS or Calm or whatnot, we, we, we orchestrate and deploy it. Uh, in a nested virtualized environment, uh, but that's transparent to the user. And then we overlay guidance, which is heavily based off our labs as to how to use the product, highlight key features. Uh, but the cool thing too is, you know, a lot of users go in and they actually just close those, that guidance and just kind of, you know, go on their own journey uh, because it is a tr- true blue product. So that's a lot of words to tell you, but <laughs> that's in a nutshell what Test Drive is. No one wants to be told what to do. <laughs> How else would you get into some weird situation in the lab itself? Exactly. So, yeah, o- over time, you know, the, you know, what, you know, where does test drive live, you know, in the, the original version? Yeah. How, yeah. how is it accessible to, to Dwayne in Canada and up North? <laughs> Very good question. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah. We, we hosted it uh, initially in public cloud. Uh, and actually, a large part of it is still hosted in public cloud. Uh, and we did that for a number of reasons. Number one, so our engineering team, we actually built Test Drive off some technology our engineering team uses uh, in QA, uh, where, you know, we were getting short on hardware and, uh, you know, engineers were fighting for to, you know, p- push their versions or images onto hardware. And so they ended up developing, um, we'll say, we'll call it NX on X, uh, but essentially it allows them to spin up virtual nested clusters you know, so get, getting better density, it's it's a lot more, you know, embracing the digital, the uh, the virtualization, and, uh, you know, lets them kind of run their code and kick the tires and whatnot. So we, we kind of leveraged that backing uh, to back test drive, and uh, we originally just built it all in the public cloud. Um, so that was kind of one reason. The other reason is just, you know, quick quick to innovate, right? So didn't have to procure hardware, didn't have to figure out networking, you know, it was all pretty easy just to stick it up in the public cloud and and, you know, kind of move on and actually build it, build it out. And we did that about, I guess we're about two years in now with what we call test drive 2.0, um, which is kind of, that's, that's test drive 2.0 is essentially what we've discussed with the overlay instructions. Test drive 1.0 is kind of a little bit more raw. It was like a customer could sign into my Nutanix and just spin up a nested cluster and there was no guidance or anything like that. So 2.0 is kind of the, the re- re- rebirth of it to get it a little more user-friendly. A little bit more direction, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, that ease of use, what's the what's the price tag of ease of use in the public cloud? Because <laughs> that seems uh, pretty lucrative for somebody not named Matt. <laughs> I wish. Yeah, uh, it's it's funny. Who would have guessed that the public cloud can get expensive? You know, it's 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 a mystery. No, no one knew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> But yeah, you know, it's it's funny because it early on, actually, I, I also, you know, don't want, I'm not going to pull punches. We, we initially said, you know, to our leadership, let's build this on Nutanix, right? We're, we're a hybrid private cloud, hybrid cloud company. Let's build it on our, on our tech. Uh, but for reasons I won't go into, they said, no, do it in the public cloud, go forth. You know, you basically have a blank check. So we said, all right, we shall. Uh, and, and we use that blank check a lot. Um, <laughs> and, you know, as them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
yeah, who uh, I, I, we could we could probably over the two years we've been doing test drive, you could probably afford a couple Ferraris um, just to kind of give it. Depending on what type of Ferrari, I won't say, but it was up there. Uh, so you know that, and as we onboarded, we have more users adoption adopting it. We onboarded additional experiences, so you know we just kind of bloomed in, in a good way, but also you know our, our bill bloomed along with it. So we kind of started revisiting the idea of you know let's repatri- let's repatriate some of these workloads on to actual Nutanix, and that was kind of the the start of test drive on premises. You remind me of an old boss I once had. He. This is back in high school. He told me that he could buy a new car every year with the amount of French fries that I dumped on the floor. <laughs> I, I don't know what that does. That speak to the, a lot of French fries on the floor, or how cheap automotives are in Canada, or both? Oh man, probably just means that <laughs> I'm a slob. But who knows? As an aside, uh, so excuse- moving. Oh, okay. I was going to share a French fry story, but I realized we're limited on time. So we, oh, we can man. Oh, I like French fries. We <laughs> so just my, had Remembrance Day, so it's like Freedom Fries, so go for it. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my best friend, I actually met him when I first moved to Georgia when I was, I think I was in second grade. And I met him because he was in the in the dining hall or whatever, the cafeteria. And uh, he was known amongst the other second graders to be a a fry fiend, but not just any fry fiend. He also very much enjoyed ranch dressing. Uh, so much so that his mother used to send him to school with a separate set of clothes every day because he would leave lunch and just be <laughs> covered in ranch. Uh, and yeah, I was like, this. I got to be friends with this guy. This guy, he marches the beat of his own drum, and, and we're still best friends. Uh, it's my fry story. <laughs> right on. <laughs> so, you know, the obviously there was a cost associated with running in the cloud. It was starting, you know, as the popularity of test drive grew and people are getting access to it, <laughs> there needs to be some type of valve, right? We can't be federal governments that just print more money. So what was, what was the mechanisms to put it back onto on-prem or do, are there still pieces still sitting in the cloud as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, good, yeah, good, very good question. So yes, it, it, it was. I wish it was as easy as just clicking an easy button. Um, but and, and 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 I should also say, in some ways, it was. You know, being a hybrid cloud company, we are as a Nutanix. But at the same time, you know, we dealt with uh, a lot of things. I think a lot of our customers are dealing with is, I mean, most of it's around network and security. But you know, really basic things too. You know, right in terms of kind of what you're saying is, you know, how do we decide what goes in the cloud and what comes on premises, and how do we flip that switch, and how do we operationalize this? And and one big question early on too is we really wanted to maintain the same, maintain the same architecture, so we didn't want to have to build a whole separate API uh, that we call to you know provision on premises versus in the cloud versus. You know, we actually, I should also back up too. We we support multiple public clouds with Test Drive. We only use one of them today. And, and then obviously we now have our on-premises cloud as well. Uh, but yeah, so I think early on it was kind of, you know, we, we had our early requirements about let's let's keep it as seamless as possible. We wanted to be transparent for the user. Uh, and there was a lot of network architecture. There's a lot of working with Nutanix engineering uh, just because, you know, it's it was designed for the, pub, the public cloud that they're using for QA, not for on-premises, but... Um, you know, all, all told, it makes it sound like I, I did a whole bunch of stuff. I really was just the you know program monkey. <laughs> uh, I really want to you know make sure I, I highlight engineering. Definitely did probably the heavy lifting. Uh, and then Jason Burns, I want to call out. He's a technical marketing engineer uh, at Nutanix, one of our Dwayne's and my colleagues. Uh, and he was awesome because uh, we we had to essentially you know figure out a way to do this securely right when it's in the public cloud it's really easy to kind of stick everyone in their own tenant and you know know it you know user A can't talk to user B. Uh, but implementing that on premises is a little more com- complicated. Uh, but fortunately, kind of the timing was right in that we were able to use Flow Networking, which at the time uh, was an early access product. Uh, it is now GA, uh, but without you know doing a whole bunch of word vomit high level, <laughs> is it allows us to do kind of multi tenant secure multi tenancy and automated provision of VPCs, so you can actually isolate test drive users. So if uh, if Dwayne came in and wanted to do some some naughty things, he can't uh, he can't mess up Matt's test drive and vice versa. Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> Go for it, man. Uh, th- that's another, uh, that was a fun, fun aspect. I, I call it whack-a-mole. But uh, even before we went on premises, one thing that we discovered was, and I guess this should be no surprise to anybody, but the number of Bitcoin miners uh, with free time, 
uh, was incredible. So, so test drive uh, early on, you know, we didn't really block anything. So we ended up seeing a lot of Bitcoin miners coming in and, you know, they didn't know that they were being backed by virtual clusters. So, you know, the, from a compute perspective, it, you know, if, if they'd known that, I don't think they would have spent the time. But um, as, as part of that, though, we had to make sure we architected both public cloud and on our, our premises to, you know, put in necessary controls to, to stop that Bitcoin mining for all, all that Dogecoin. Yeah, I think, you know, he brings up good points. A couple of things that out of those sound bites that I got one moving back to on prem. I don't know. Did you have to deal with storage at all? Because I think that's one thing customers probably have a more of a pain point in moving when they have to leave. Did you have to really move anything on the storage side or could you just build new? So for the most part, yeah, we were, we, yeah, we were very fortunate in the sense that because test drive is, is an ephemeral workload, right? So once, once you go and take a test drive, they're all good for four hours. Uh, you have the option to extend to eight, but after eight hours, we just trash it, right? We don't save it. And we actually, you know, reprovision each one from scratch. So we were fortunate in that we didn't really have to migrate storage back down, but we still had, you know, we still had to worry about some storage, right? So, you know, we use Calm to automate the provisioning of these clusters, and obviously we need to store images somewhere. Uh, so actually today, uh, whether you're on-premises or in the public cloud, we actually pull from a bucket that's in the same public cloud, uh, which we are now our next step. So I guess you can call it test drive four, but so we called it the 4.0 release. This is going to be 4.1 is we are implementing a, a, a proxy cache essentially, because we, we've noticed, uh, you know, kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul while we've we repatriated workloads and VMs, our network utilization is really high over our VPN because we're pulling, every time we provision a, a cluster, we're pulling down images. Uh, so we definitely have to kind of be cognizant of storage there. That's a good call out for customers too, or really anybody in general as they move stuff around. The, uh, the other one with that too on the security side, obviously... <laughs> You don't know until something happens and hopefully you're lucky to catch it before the cost goes too far up. So part of securing the workload, and maybe you use a bit of it within the public cloud anyway, but using flow networking, uh, what were the main pieces to secure the workloads in that environment? Just policy, like policy rules, or were you also using micro segmentation? Yeah, all of the above. Um, so it, it was, you know, from from a flow networking, it's, it's actually interesting too, meeting with our engineering. So, you know, Jason's been really good about kind of bridging the gap between what we've been doing on test drive on premises and working with actual flow engineering. Because uh, we're, we're basically using all of the features of flow. So yeah, doing secure multi-tenancy with the automated VPC, that was kind of step one. Uh, step two was, yep, like flow policies as well as uh, micro seg, right? So we can, we can get very granular in terms of what traffic direction we allow to where and under on which ports. And then uh, probably the most complex thing, and actually delayed our go live, um, but no hard feelings, but uh, mm. Nutanix InfoSec came back and said, hey, you know, we need to make sure all this traffic goes out the public cloud, right? So even though this is in our Nutanix data center, you know, we need to protect our IP reputation. You know, in a, a worst case scenario, we don't want Nutanix.com IP addresses to uh, be doing funky stuff. So be blocked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and that was, you know, it's funny because, it, you know, on, on the surface, that's a, it's, it was literally like a one sentence requirement. And uh, once we started digging in and realized exactly what that meant, uh, that really, you know, it, it became very complex. Uh, but because of flow networking and because of the VPC automation, uh, we know we stood up a VPN between our on-premises and, and public cloud. Uh, we worked very closely with Corp IT, uh, we basically got it to work. Uh, a lot of network ops, a lot of uh, router kind of modification, but it's 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 rock solid now. It's uh, it's working well. Um, as far as the gear moving back, maybe what you know was there was there a partner in crime that maybe for the that side? Because I think you know it'd be if you're using cloud hardware in multiple regions, there's probably a fair bit of hardware that at least a startup cost that would have to happen. Totally. Yeah. You, you've teed me up. So yeah, I definitely wanted to thank our, our good friends at Intel. <laughs> uh, Cause yeah, it, Intel was awesome. Uh, you know, we, we approached them, you know, actually out of the gate, we, we didn't plan on kind of leveraging the partnership. You know, we were going to do this either way, but um, you know, Intel being a really close partner of Utanix has came up to us and said, Hey, you know, we want to help you guys with this project. This sounds really cool. Uh, so yeah, they, they essentially helped us, uh, help us fund our on-premises hardware. And right now we've got a 14 node. It's a, it's a top of the line cluster. We're leveraging, 
uh, you know, best in performance Intel technologies. We're using uh, Intel Optane, so uh, Optane SSDs. Uh, we're using the beefiest processors they have, um, and it's uh, it's it's humming. Like with with our fourteen nodes, we can host a minimum of two hundred what we call TD twos, or uh, that's that's the test drive the private cloud. Uh, and obviously, each different each experience is different in its resource utilization. But um, yeah, it's fourteen nodes. I mean, that's insane in terms of the density, right? We could get at least fifteen users per physical node, uh, and then we actually probably get well north of there. Uh, we, we did some load load and volume testing, and that was a fun exercise. Um, and I, I think we actually got to the I point. I think where that's pro- sorry. I just like that's probably even more impressive knowing that you're deploying Prism Central right for every customer that grabs a test drive too, or maybe mm-hmm. even two Prism Centrals. And if yeah. you deployed those, you know that <laughs> there's some some RAM involved. A bit well, and funny you mentioned that too. So, so you know, coming from the services world, I fully expected RAM to be our our constraining factor in this uh, in this project. And uh, as it turns out, actually CPU is, um, which was kind of surprising to me. They're they're pretty close uh, in terms of our utilization, but yeah, C- CPU. And I guess it makes sense, right? Because we're nesting virtualization, and so you know we, we've got an HV VM running on HV, and of course on that VM there's user VMs. So, you know, I think that's part of the reason we see higher compute. Um, but nonetheless, yeah, it's super impressive getting, you know, it's not just a single VM either, right? Each test drive, like you said, we, we deploy a PC, we deploy a CVM, we just like deploy an HV host. On the HV host, we then have some nested VMs. So, you know, we're, we're looking at, you know, several, you know, handful of VMs, half a dozen VMs per test drive. And to get multiplied by 15 per, per physical node, it's, it's pretty pretty good density. Are, are you still in a position, like, on demand, uh, whether it's, you know, multiple events happening, new product launch to burst into the public cloud when that cluster gets full? Yes. Yeah. So that was one, that was an early requirement that we had as well is, um, you know, we, we, while, while we want to repatriate these workloads, we didn't want to, you know, uh, hamstring ourselves and be stuck if you know times of high demand. So uh, yeah, we can absolutely burst the cloud. Uh, we actually have a number of mechanisms that kind of check utilization. And once we reach a super th- certain threshold, it'll automatically seamlessly start provisioning uh, to the public cloud. Uh, which is, and we also you know for that kind of in the same vein, we've actually set up some operational things as well, right? So I have a, I call it the master override switch, but it's essentially a switch that lets me. Uh, send everything to the public cloud. Oh, boy. Uh, so if we need to do some sort of maintenance on premises, I could basically flip that switch, you know, kind of evacuate. Are there any thoughts on the regions you use or deploy to, or you just have a couple set up that are kind of acting as your, your place to land in, in the event of need? Your, your team, yep. I'm very impressed, Wayne, because I, I actually, I know you're not in the know about, uh, exactly what's coming down the pipe for test drive. You actually teed me up perfectly because uh, that's the next thing we're doing. Um, so, so, so I am pretty much clueless on most topics. Um, you, if, if you believe that <laughs> to be, to be clear, uh, but yeah, <laughs> so, so right now, um, and I guess I, I'll start to, I want to apologize to basically anyone that's not in at least the, the uh, Western hemisphere, uh, so for our friends in APJ, even our friends in Europe, uh, currently all test drives, whether they're in public cloud or on our premise on premises, are, are hosted hosted out of the U.S. Um, you know, U.S. based regions. Boo, boo. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we need more data centers up in, in Canada. You know, you guys got cooling built in up there. I gotta gotta use that. AWS just announced a new region in Alberta, but of course that won't be here for like three years. And then don't think Microsoft and, and both that or AWS both have stuff in the, the East where the big decisions are made. <laughs> <laughs> right, the heavy hitters, but yes. Yeah, so, so today it's all North America, uh, but actually we are currently in our staging environment. I can actually say as of yesterday, uh, we're starting with testing, uh, rolling out uh, essentially to to regions all over the globe, right? So we're starting with APJ. Uh, I guess that's you know obviously kind of we're going to aim for the opposite side of the globe, and also our biggest use case other than North America is uh, India, actually. So between U.S. and Canada, our next uh, second biggest user uh, use case comes from India. Uh, so yeah, we're currently testing just public cloud. 
in uh, in APJ region. But uh, kind of following from that, we have plans to potentially roll out uh, additional on-premises clusters in some Nutanix data centers over in that area of the world uh, and, and automatically routing users using some GSLB and some fanciness around uh, ingress control. Um, and that's actually something that I've omitted, by the way. You asked me earlier, Dwayne, and I, I won't I won't spend too much time on it because I know we're getting short on time. But uh, in terms of technologies we're built on, I also want to, you know, other than being core Nutanix technologies, we actually leverage, you know, cutting edge CI, CD. We're building everything in Python and Kubernetes. Uh, we use Google Firestore as our data backing because we're cool kids. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're cutting edge, man. We're uh, we're definitely using the, the latest and greatest, which is fun. Is you think some of that that work will show up in an architectural paper or maybe it'll help do the, I guess, the newly minted validated design? Good question. So yes, in short, in short, <laughs> um, we definitely, you know, now that the dust is settling, well, and well, we're catching our breath ish. There's always, we're always still running. Uh, but yeah, no, we're definitely looking to publish at the very least some blogs, um, you know, put together high level design uh, because, you know, the beauty of this, you know, cost, cost saving aside for the company and for our shareholders, uh, the beauty of this is we are using Nutanix techno- technologies in the same use case that many of our customers are looking at. So we definitely want to highlight that and say, hey, you know, you guys can do it too. So, uh, yeah, definitely keep an eye out and validate designs. Yeah, I think, you know, no one no one went to the public cloud because it was cheaper. But obviously there's an ease of use and time to value that can be can be brought there, but that doesn't preclude anyone from, you know, operating their own data center. Now it's obviously it's a, a complicated mess. And that's why if you're good at it, you get paid pretty well. Um, yeah. So it all, it all makes sense. The one last question that I kind of was thinking about, are there any new technologies for customers that may spur out of it? You mentioned proxying. So, I don't know if there's something to be had there with uh, within the multiple tenants that would would help out. Yeah, so I mean, I, I can say definitively, based on the project, we actually fit. We we had a continuous feedback loop to product, right? So in particular, Flow Networking has uh, at the very, very least we found some bugs, uh, which is always fun. But they also, you know, we went to them and said, hey, you know, this feature is great, but we need it to kind of work this way. And you know, product team was awesome in that they actually went and implemented that. Uh, likewise, Calm. Um, I know we actually, the Calm DSL, we actually found the other day that we were having some issues provisioning and, uh, you know, we could have just ripped it out of the test drive, but we actually went to the Calm product team and said, hey guys, this API is broken. You need to fix this. And, uh, and they did. So certainly we, we'll see some benefit in Nutanix product as a result of this project. Uh, but yeah, I think kind of stepping directly, stepping back directly from product, there's definitely some architectures and some, some proxies and some just, you know, network design patterns that could potentially be leveraged, uh, by, by customers. Nice. It's always, you know, someone's already done the hard work, you know, why reinvent the wheel? So it's good to know that some of that will, we'll see the, the free pages of the internet. But with, with that, uh, maybe, you know, if there's anything else you want to tell about test drive, anything new coming up, maybe a new lab that might be on its way. Totally. Yeah. So I guess I definitely encourage everyone listening to go take a test drive if you haven't. And if you have, go take another one. Um, <laughs> and actually see if you can tell what's on premises and what's not. Uh, hint, hint, you probably won't be able to, uh, or at least my hope is you won't be able to. But uh, yeah, I think in the in the short term, uh, there probably won't be a ton of change. Actually, we're trying to keep it transparent, uh, but we are moving more experiences on premises. Uh, I can guarantee you, though, if you take a Nutanix private cloud test drive, what we call TD2 today, it will be on premises unless we have some sort of maintenance activity going on <laughs> or some high demand event. Uh, but yeah, and, and then just for Nutanix test drive in general, we're definitely looking at onboarding additional new experiences, upgrading existing ones. Uh, keep a lookout uh, for Era. So Era is going to be up, upgraded to the latest and greatest here shortly. Uh, Calm is ripe for some upgrades as well. Uh, so definitely, you know, lifecycle managing those, but also new experiences. So we've um, been working with our, our our friends at the you know Citrix. We're looking at a, a Nutanix and Citrix test drive, potentially something around Nutanix Move and Nutanix X-Ray as well. So uh, yeah, lots lots coming down the pipe. Uh, definitely, you know, we're, we're going to hopefully start blogging about it more once we come up for air a little bit, and uh, just keep an eye on Nutanix.com slash test drive. So come back, come early, come often, you know, see what's uh, shaking in the test drive world. 
I would encourage everyone to check out. If you have any other questions that maybe has been spurred on how maybe Matt and his team has done have have done something, go to the community uh, webpage, uh, Hybrid Clusters Forum, or another forum will will get you connected. And then also. Uh, check out Nutanix.dev. Uh, we're continuing to push scripts and other pieces of code that are, you know, being used across enterprises there. So maybe there's, you know, a get out of jail free card or at least save you a couple hours uh, with something that someone's already tried out. So with that, thanks, Matt. It's been uh, a pleasure learning from you. And uh, I will go try to figure out where Test Drive lives. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Have fun playing in the snow. Thanks, Dwayne. Always a pleasure, man. Remember, you can watch on-demand sessions if you go to Nutanix.com forward slash next. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you're subscribed to the show wherever you consume podcasts. So with that, from your friends here at Nutanix, have a great week. Mm -hmm.